just getting curious about Notion. Somebody who's had it on their computer for a while and never quite figured out how to get into it, or an avid user for years. Whatever your situation is, today we're talking about Notion, and specifically, I wanted to share with you the way that I'm doing task management, planning, that sort of thing in my Notion in 2023, how I've used it through the year, and things that I've noticed. I've been using Notion for quite a while, I don't know how many years, um, since it was pretty new, and I think I'm about to do a pretty radical shift. And so before that happens, I wanted to actually share with you from the perspective of systems that aren't working perfectly, but that have been used. Because I think that often I find as a neurodivergent person that I would much rather hear about what systems have worked for people, what systems aren't working for people, but most importantly, things that they've actually tried for a little while. Um, so that's my intention today. In addition, I just noticed in watching some videos about Notion, for example, um, Marie Poulin, who does fabulous stuff on YouTube about Notion, that I seem to use it very differently from some other people. So I probably will do some additional videos um, where I talk about just how I use Notion in general, what some of my habits are, um, and probably I'll do something about my like general sort of resource collection, note taking, um, witchy practice, uh, kind of virtual bullet journal, um, second brain, all of those things that I use Notion for um, with all these different pages and databases that I have. But so that I can keep this to a reasonable length, today we're sp specifically going to be talking about um, how I'm using it to kind of figure out what I'm doing from day to day and to organize my life in that way. If you're new here, hi, my name is Avery and I help justice aligned neurodivergent and nerdy humans to access and cultivate ease and self-trust for growing into our emerging future. I actually did uh, an audio course, uh, gosh, it's been over a year now, um, called Unproductive. And I talked in that course, um, it's still available, I'll leave a link below if you're interested. Um, but I was doing this course where I talked about being kind of the anti-productivity productivity expert because I had learned so much about productivity, personal knowledge management, time uh, estimation, planning, project management, all these kind of nerdy topics over the years. And that really my kind of anti-capitalist, neuroemergent um, viewpoint lens uh, led me to abandon a lot of the things that I learned or to you know, question them or question the kind of motivation um, for using them. And so when I'm using Notion for this purpose, I'm always kind of holding a little bit of tension um, between needing some structure and strategy in my life and also wanting to kind of flow with the universe. <laughs> um, and I am somebody who's ADHD, so, you know, the autistic side of me kind of needs some of that structure. Um, but also the ADHD side of me has just accepted that my systems are always going to be changing and that's just how it is and I'm okay with that. Um, so in this video I'm gonna show you how I set this up in Notion but also it's uh, not necessarily just about Notion but um, kind of how I've been experimenting with different modes of, of planning um, throughout especially this year. So here you can see that we're looking at my life dashboard. I think actually this was initially a template. I've done so much to it over the years. Um, that I don't even know. I want to say maybe it came from either Michelle B or it might have been um, Marley Grace. But uh, so apologies <laughs> for inexact credit on that. Um, but there's very little here I think that, that looks the same. Um, I wanted to have a life dashboard and I gotta be honest, in reality, you know, a lot of folks like to use Notion for dashboards and it can be a really good tool for um, you know having a bunch of different dashboards. I find that the way my attention works, I tend to only be able to use one, really. So that's one thing to keep in mind um, for yourself, especially if maybe you're uh, a person with ADHD, is like, do you need a bunch of different dashboards? Will you actually click on a bunch of different dashboards? I find myself accessing stuff over here on the left-hand side far a lot more than I would like spend time on a dashboard. Um, I'll talk about that maybe in, in a later video, but. I've got this one life dashboard that is kind of my home base. Um, I do also have a dashboard for my business, 
but my actual like projects, activities, etc. Um, I tried seeing whether I wanted to do that separated out. Um, and I mean, I can even show you, this is um, my sort of biz dashboard. So I try to make like a little directory of all the things in my business and the campaigns I'm working on. I even did like a lunar um, cycle thing where I would like remind myself of what I wanted to focus on when the moon was waxing or waning. But honestly, in reality, I do everything from here. Um, so I ended up opening this up to show everything that's both personal and professional. Um, I like to have kind of um, a focusing, an intention, uh, you know, something on my main dashboard that reminds me of why I'm doing things, reminds me where I am, helps me to kind of locate myself. I talk a lot in my business about how neurodivergence is a little like an ocean and sometimes you need navigational aids. Um, I'll be honest with you, I don't necessarily look at this top section all that often, um, but I do fill it out each month. Um, so my practice happens to be that I do some tarot um, pulls around the new moon. So when I say month on this dashboard, I actually mean new moon to new moon. Um, and what I do is I pull some guiding cards. I put the cards here as a reminder to myself, and then I extrapolate from those cards um, themes for the month. And then from those themes, a few sort of high level major goals, or you could, you could even call these themes as well. I'm not big on, in fact, I don't even know why I wrote goals there, because I don't really do goals. We're going we're gonna to rename that right now, intentions. Um, but you know, here we have some sort of general intentions. And then there isn't one this month, but often I have a featured practice. So something that I'm trying to do, whether it's like observational practice, like a mindfulness thing, it might be um, just like a habit I'm trying to build, whatever. So this is my really simple sort of top um, of the dashboard. I also include on my dashboard um, my word of the year, as well as my core desired feelings, which are practices that I do um, for the yearly reset. If you're curious, let me know. I'll make a video about that as well as we're nearing the end of the year again. Um, but then I just have like a few quick links to things. And really the, the sort of vegan meat and potatoes of it is all in this section. So I have been doing some version of David Allen's Getting Things Done system for, I guess, over a decade now. Um, and I will admit that I have adapted it to the point that it's pretty much not recognizable. Um, you know, I don't think that GTD is like the be all end all necessarily quote unquote right, but you may notice some of the terminology in this video and some of the stuff I do is similar to that system. Um, in particular, the idea of different horizons. So actually down at the bottom, so this is all the kind of um, nitty gritty, but down at the bottom, we have kind of the bigger picture. Um, so I, I have added this in um, this year, actually. I wanted to put this on my dashboard. Um, these are just for, for the year. Some high level focuses, general things I kind of want to be playing with. Um, these are some big rocks. These are not things that necessarily are absolutely going to happen or that I expect this to go well, but I just, I like having this stuff here, even though I don't look at it all that often. Um, I think it's useful to have kind of like vision-y stuff um, in case that does inspire you. The life horizons though is really the, the getting things done bit. So I'm going to show you this stuff down at the bottom and then we'll go back up. Um, if you're familiar with getting things done, there's this idea of like 10,000 feet um, up to 50,000 feet. So I'm going to minimize that um, so you can see. So yeah, I just sort of laid out my um, 20,000, 30,000, 40,000, 50,000 um, feet level because they're pretty easy to just stick in a dashboard so that I can look at these and reference them anytime I, I want to. Um, but then really the thing that I use the most would be the 10,000 feet and that's projects. So like a lot of folks in Notion, I have a um, projects and a tasks uh, database. I actually named this projects and work streams because I realized that I wanted to include in the project database things that if you use the PARA method, Tiago Forte's PARA method, you'll be familiar with these as areas, um, more like areas of life. Uh, 
or some of these are, are kind of, I don't know, they're in between, right? So they're things like having one project for one-on-one -on -one sessions. You know, I might be doing one-on-one -on -one sessions for years. Um, it's not exactly an area. I would call the area uh, for my business, like the, the big area. Um, but it makes sense in my brain to consider this a project. I think strict getting things done would not do that. That would be one of the um, roles that I had down below. Um, but I just like to be able to associate tasks with that. That is one of the changes I'm considering though, is adding a database for areas um, and treating projects in areas differently. I like using in Notion, the, with the database setup, um, I like doing these grouped views. So uh, like I mentioned, you know, I'm, I'm seeing all my personal and professional stuff here, but I have them grouped. This is things that are for my business, but they're internal, if that makes sense. So they're not things I'm authoring, but they're, well, some of them, I mean, this is, but this one-on-one -on -one sessions project isn't about a specific one-on-one -on -one offering. It's actually just a catch-all project where I keep my responsibilities related to my one-on-one -on -one work. Um, I have things like book notes and uh, book reviews, um, content creation and website design. So these are all things that I'm doing in the background for my business. Then I have the actual current offers here and I have a personal um, projects section. So, you know, I like doing it, um, having this uh, high level view. You can see that I have a lot of different views here, different ways that I can look at my projects. So for example, I do a Kanban style um, review board where I can drag things easily in and out and say, uh, yes, no, um, do this soon, don't do this soon. The way that I've set up uh, my projects is that there are a lot of properties on each of these um, records. So like, let's go into, I wanna make sure that it's something I can share. Um, yeah, let's do this one. So here's an example um, of an offer. I have all sorts of properties because I realized that I really needed to think about my projects, um, particularly from a business lens, I needed to think of my projects on a lot of different um, levels. So I need to think about like what role is it serving in the overall um, sort of existence of my business, I guess. Um, I need to think about, you know, what's the price bucket? Like where does it fall in terms of um, price accessibility and, um, and income to me? You know, what kind of offer is it? Um, is it something that's gonna be available once or is it all the time? Is it kind of on demand? Um, what's the focus? Who are the people that would be interested in, in it? Um, et cetera. Um, kind of where is it in the idea stage? How excited am I? How much effort does it take? And then I have all this stuff down here. So one of the things I like about Notion's general setup is that you know a database record is also a page. And so I can include all these little toggle lists that are just underneath like bullet lists or notes um, so that I can keep like what is the messaging I'm using for this offer, what's the marketing strategy, um, what is actually covered in the offer. Um, this it, When I use this project checklist, um, it's a uh, it's an inline view of the tasks that are just filtered to that project. So you'll see that a lot on other people's um, videos about Notion. One of the nice things is that you know this project can have a bunch of, you know, I do find that really powerful if you are setting things up in Notion where you might have reference files, where you might have um, other stuff. You could put it all on the project page, but you could also, uh, if you are somebody who thinks in databases like I do, you can have a bunch of different types of databases. Um, so, you know, that's a business example, but even for my personal stuff, I might be working on a project and there's um, you know, a related thought that I had that I jotted down in my commonplace book. And so I can make sure that that note is linked to the project. That's a high level view um, that I use. And then if we scroll up a little, so there's so many of these because I've been experimenting with different ways of thinking about tasks, actions, etc. Um, this is in the sidebar, this tasks database. I find it really helpful to have this in favorites. And so I will just hit plus and quick record. So that's one of the things that I do a lot in Notion is I'm gonna quick record a task. In GTD, 
technically you would just put the name and then walk away. I find as an ADHD person that it's actually better for me when I'm thinking about the thing to go ahead and classify some of this stuff rather than trying to remember during my weekly review what the heck the task was and what was it about and why was I thinking about that thing. It's just better for me to go ahead and do it even if it, it takes a little bit of time. And yes, it does pull me out of focus on whatever I was focusing on, but I'm already pulled out of focus because I'm entering a task. So I'm just okay with that personally. Um, you know, I have a bunch of different um, things that I do here. I guess I'll call out a couple of them. So, you know, different people feel different ways about dates. I'm currently in a practice of only putting dates if they're real. So only doing like hard deadline type due dates, which means I don't have very many dates. Um, I'm probably going to be shifting that or maybe even adding a second date field, a different way of looking at dates. What I do have is a target quarter. Um, so I find this really helpful for me. Um, when I'm thinking about the different levels at which, and I'll show you in a second, the levels at which I view tasks, it's useful for me to just have a sense of like, the ballpark when do I want to be working on this thing? Because I find that the idea of next actions and someday maybe is great and all, but if you are a neurodivergent person, if you are somebody with ADHD, if you're generating thousands of ideas um, and tasks and things to do, it's going to be really overwhelming to look even at all of your next actions. Um, and so I like just having that target. And that also helps me with my someday review is that I'm not having to review everything that's in someday um, all the time. So I will target it with a quarter. And then I usually just look at this quarter's um, stuff. Of course, attach it to a project. I often do things like, um, I also, I should say, do things like having check boxes for is this a timely thing? Like, is it time sensitive? Just period, yes or no. Um, is it an external commitment? Have I told somebody I would do something, yes or no? These, including things like this can be really useful in Notion because of course you're gonna be able to filter your view by it. So anything, when I talk with folks who are setting up Notion for the first time, one of the things I recommend is to keep this fairly simple when you start, but to make sure that you have whatever fields would be meaningful to you um, in order to limit of you. So if you only are going to want to be able to see things that are marked with today's date, well then you have to have dates. But you could also do something like a drop down menu where you say Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or you know, this week, next week. I know Marie Poulin uses next now later. So there's different ways you can think of that. Um, for me right now, I'm mostly relying on this target quarter. And then if it's a real deadline, I will put it in here um, as well. I put how long it takes, which is really useful because I can sum this up and get a sense of like how much am I looking at. Um, life area, context. My contexts are not like at phone, at work. They're more like writing, recording, imagining, because these are different kinds of focus and energy for me. So for a while I did have separate um, like focus, high, medium, low, energy, high, medium, low. Um, and I found that filling them out took more brain power than I necessarily wanted to use on it and that they usually mapped pretty well to the kind of work it was. So for example, writing for me is always a high focused task and it takes more spoons for me to think about the fact that writing is a high focused task than just to notice that a task is writing. Um, so that's how I decided to deal with that. It's not perfect, but I made, um, I have made categories that explicitly kind of control for that. So this used to be a shorter list, but I split some things out. For example, um, these all used to be the same one, but fidgeting, refining, and processing. So what it means to me is that fidgeting are things where I have no focus on them. Like I can just be doing them with my full focus on something else. That's helpful to know if I have something like uh, a movie or a video or something that I really want to actually be putting my focus on. And I know I can't do that. On, like I just can't. I mean, I have ADHD. I cannot do that on its own. So it's nice to know, like, what can I fidget around and do while I listen or watch? Um, processing is like half attention. So processing for me is things that I'm going to have to like kind of skim or glance at and do something with. But I could be, I could be watching something that's kind of not high focus as well. I can divide my attention. Whereas refining, I split out because I realized that there were certain things like editing that didn't require the same kind of creative energy as, as writing the original thing, but they did require my focus. Um, 
And so that's Professor Fineman. You know, reading, watching, most of these are pretty self-explanatory. So that's how I do context. Um, notes, oh, the tag, this is old, there's not random tags. Um, I, the one thing I do copy over from the project is to see its status, because again, I wanna be able to limit my view sometimes to only show me active projects. So keep in mind that if there are things about the project you want to filter the tasks by, you just need to copy it over with one of these, um, what do they call the magnifying glass? Uh, lookup? Yeah, I believe it's called a lookup field. Um, yeah, so that's the, the basic idea. I, I also have a relation um, with task if they're for a specific person, which is kind of like an additional context. It's related to another database I have of people like clients or business partners. Um, friends and family, and that way, if I know that I'm having a call with that person, I can see all the related tasks. So that's what the actual task records look like. Um, and then the way that I display them, so I have them here in my next actions. And like I said, my usual view um, would be to take a look at um, the things that were marked to be this quarter target. That includes everything that has a date for this quarter. So these are the things that I would like to get done in the quarter sometime. So I'm thinking this as kind of a big bin or a menu that I can pull from. Um, I no longer, I, I've noticed that this is, is in fact too overwhelming to just like randomly need to want to do something and then look at it, unless I'm procrastinating on everything else and then this is useful. <laughs> So I usually look at this when I'm actually planning out my week, but sometimes it becomes the procrastination thing as well. That's what, kind of why I have this view where it's um, grouped actually by how many minutes it takes me because I would start with the shorter things for that purpose. But I also have views, this one, um, oh, that is by time. And then, yeah, there's like ones that are grouped in different ways. Uh, oh yeah, by type, um, types of task. Uh, I have, I like having a view for the single project. So you can put this on your project page, but I also just like being able to filter quickly my tasks down to what's going on with one project. Low focus is again, using those contexts um, to determine what that would be, you know, 10 minute things. Most of these I honestly though would say, I don't really use. Like most of the time I'm just hanging out in one view. Um, if you know that that's going to be true for you, that you're like unlikely to be doing a lot of this, you know, um, like looking at different views, then you, you might want to consider whether you do need as many properties as I have. I might want to consider that myself. Um, but like I said, I'm not really working directly off of that anymore. Um, when I started doing this, I was. That's what I would work from. And then every week I would do my weekly review. Um, I'd go through and uh, move things around, decide that things were no longer, you know, move things to someday or whatever. Um, but I, I just realized that it, it wasn't like, that was not totally serving me. And I almost kind of needed to go back to basics. Basics. I was getting overwhelmed by having a large system and having tons and tons of next actions and just thinking like, I don't know, there's no right answer um, when it comes to priorities. And so I tried some different ways of handling this. At one point I was actually using, I have them hiding down at the bottom. Um, I have these routines. So at one point these were all at the top and I was doing these routines. So it would be like morning routine, check, 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 check. Um, when you're in a flow state, do these things. When you're, um, these were like Pomodoro sprints. Oh, this is medic. So this is specifically if I'm on my ADHD meds, like these are the things I should be focusing on because I know for a fact that uh, I can't focus on them at any other time. Wandering was sort of um, times when I'm not uh, currently taking meds because they're not they're not for the entire day. Um, you know, these were these lists were ordered with the intention that I would start from the top, and then if I couldn't do the thing on the top, I could go to the next thing. That kind of worked. Um, I think it can work. But I think your brain can also get rebellious or it can get overwhelmed by how many things are there. And that kind of step-by-step -step menu, I find that my eyes start just like looking around the menu for what I want to do. Um, and I often don't really have an answer. I did also have um, restorative things, which was specifically so that after I was in a flow state, I had some active rest restoration options um, available for me. 
there was also a period where I was really into the Pomodoros and so I had this whole thing of like I work on this and then I work on this and you know um, one cycle each intuitive check-in um, you know I ha even had things like this was from a coach uh, that I worked with you know the the kind of like um, core thing that I was working towards being um, and like highlighted in pink and like all of that worked for a couple weeks and then didn't so the idea of having fixed routines just probably isn't my thing and isn't going to be. In fact, I tried this recently again. You'll see this daily habits. I tried making a table. This is something you could do um, where you just do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, check boxes for each day of the week and all the things that I want to do each day. And this looks really overwhelming. Like a lot of these are five minute tasks, less than five minute tasks, admittedly. However, um, this didn't do anything at all um, the, the idea was that the idea was that I would I would go through and you know some of these are kind of morning routine some of them would be like time limited so um, a concept that works for a lot of folks um, with ADHD is saying like I'm not gonna work any more than 60 minutes on this thing because I don't want to get stuck on this thing I want to move to the next thing and again this theoretically would have been great um, the idea was that I would reference tasks down below I would reference a current project down below Reality didn't happen. Um, now I have a video on this channel that I will link on grid planning. So I have been doing this grid thing um, and you can check that out um, for what the heck this is. But this is sort of a high level um, view and I'm finding this works pretty well in combination with a weekly prioritization. So when I do my weekly review, which I do have a, a dashboard for that, um, but when I do my weekly review, what I will do is take a look at a couple things. Um, consider, you know, in this grid planning, I'll update uh, the week actions. I'll be like, okay, where am I on this goal? Do I still need to do the things that are already here? Are there new things that go here? Okay, great. This is like a good starting point for me. And I can open up weekly priorities. So I started doing this about a month ago. It's been working really well. So this, you know, looks a lot like a weekly planner page might look. Um, I've got dates. Again, my week is based on moon phases. It's not a real week. It's, um, it's just a quarter of a moon. Um, I put down the focusing card for my weekly spread. I put down any astro weather, put down calendar appointments for the week. Um, and then based on these things above as well as anything down in the tasks that has a due date um, anything that I suddenly realize has a due date um, I will include you know things that are actually due that have a like real priority behind them um, I put down one or two projects that I specifically would like to advance this week uh, I put down some tasks that I want to complete although they're not at this level I put down some ongoing things that um, I'd like to make some headway on. Often these are like organizational tasks or things like writing blog posts. And then I put like, what do I want to focus on in my free time and what do I want to be doing less? And I found that this has been working pretty well for me. It's obviously really simple. It's not linked to anything, right? It's a very non-notion in that way. Um, but you can create simple tables now, so that's what I did. I'm always going to be referencing down here and I'm going to be referencing up here to fill this in. Um, but I'm just doing this each week. And so even if I don't do my entire weekly review, um, this is here. Now, the last thing I'll show you is I tried in between this thing called big synthesis. So one of the things that I was noticing about the idea of projects and tasks is that it works great, except if you also have routines and you're not great at routines and you're not great at habits and you really need reminders about things that are more routine. And if you're like me and you don't really want to put much on your calendar um, unless it's a, an appointment. So I've tried a few ways of doing this, but I basically made this database on top of a database so this is a database that is not my tasks and not my projects what it is is that I've come up with a record for each 
sort of each thing, but, but how I define thing depends on what it is. So you'll notice that a lot of these are actually checklists. So they're things like monthly backups, quarterly life review, um, what else? Learning is like, what am I focusing on learning? So this is like an area of life. Um, this is a weekly thing I do. Some of these are more discrete tasks. I have like one for all my current, current external commitments. That's just pulling um, from the tasks database on that card. So these cards I'll open up and they might have a database on them. They might have a checklist like this on them. Um, some of them are literally a link to one single Google Doc. It's like, do this thing. So I have things like on the first of the month, I always pull my um, uh, just like financial, like where all the accounts are. Um, and so I just have a link to a spreadsheet. It reminds me to do that on, on the first of the month. This was helpful because it allowed me to see things that have different like context, different size, different scope next to each other because they made sense to my brain that way. Because I think of these things as um, not equal weight, but all the different things I could be focusing on in a day. Now this is everything that's overdue, which I realize I have a lot of things overdue. I also experimented with um, giving each of these cards a, a day um, of the week or any day. So some of them have a specific day, some of them have any day. This was when I was experimenting. And again, I have a video on this. I'll try to remember to link. Um, I was experimenting with the concept of planetary days and trying to plan based on planetary days. So when I was doing that, I've kind of fallen off, but when I was doing that, you know, this would only be, this is a Thursday right now. So it's showing things like learning, which was a Jupiter day activity for me. It's showing things like inbox clear that are every day for me. Um, and things that like, like new and full moon practices, I have on here because if I forgot to do them on the day, I want to make sure they're available and it, the day of the week is going to vary. So they just show up every day. Um, brush my teeth, take my vitamins. It's every day. But um, this is this is one way to kind of like limit the having nine million things in front of your face. And that worked pretty well, I would say. I just got to the point where so many things were behind that it was making me nervous that I couldn't see everything. Um, and so I decided to mostly just be doing this big review. Um, but what I've done with these is that they each have um, target dates. They're, it's using a formula um, where I put in like a, uh, how often I want to do it, like every day, every three days, every 30 days, every 365 days. And based on when I last did it, it gives me a date. And so I, I found that useful because it kind of, um, rather than having due dates, it's more like, have you done this in the last seven days? Have you done this in the last three days? Have you done this, you know, since like in, in a quarter? No, I have not. So it's been a while. Um, it shows me the date so I can see when I last did it. And that, that was a way of like not shaming myself about dates and deadlines, but at the same time giving myself a sense of like, wow, this has been sitting here for a while. Maybe you want to do something about that. Um, and then I can put things like, you know, do a random task <laughs> every few days. And then the task database is on there. Um, if I want to. Again, I would say that I'm really using this the weekly thing the most, um, this thing the most, but I do also find this really useful for routines and things. Um, and it's a very different way of doing it than I've seen a lot of folks like they would just make routines or now that Notion has recurring tasks. You could definitely do it that way. Um, you could do areas of their own thing, but this was like an interesting experiment in trying to have multiple contexts at the same time. And so things like weekly reviews fall under here. And instead of doing one weekly review, I actually have several weekly review cards for different batches um, because batching is really great for ADHD. So I, I, each of these cards are batching similar types of activities if it is a checklist. Um, some of these are, like blog posts, this means write one blog post and here's a menu. So a lot of times I'll have something on the card where it's like, here's some things you can choose one of these, just pick one. Some of them it's like, no, this is a, uh, this is actually a routine. Um, like, you know, this is a review, we do one, two, three. Um, so there's a lot of flexibility in doing that kind of gallery view. I can, I can get a quick glance at what's going on. Okay, so that was my um, <laughs> very complex um, planning 
strategizing system. Um, I've kind of, as we've gone, tried to give you some you know, highlights of what I think works well and what didn't work well. I think the overall takeaway is that thinking about what you need to have in front of your face at any given time is really useful. I think the idea, even though I haven't quite got it right, of um, making the system a little more flexible so that instead of saying things are due on a date and then you know you panic um, because you inevitably can't do it on the date giving yourself a sense of like okay where are we generally you know being able to see the different levels of things like this and to say like okay let me check on the projects let me check at a task level and move things around and and having things like here's my target quarter i didn't show you this but the projects also have like a target quarter to consider them again um that can make your reviews a lot easier because you're only looking at things that are coming up pretty soon and making decisions about them instead of every possible idea that you have for the future um anyway we've gone lo on long enough so uh, i hope this was helpful to at least one person let me know in the comments um do you use notion for your task management uh how do you like it what have you learned or noticed especially if you're adhd and neurodivergent but even if you're not um <laughs> And, you know, I would say overall, if you're considering it, like, it's definitely, it is a lot of setup, it is a lot of customization, it is a lot of thinking and, like, design, and a lot of this I can do because I have a background in databases. That said, there's a lot of templates you can access, and I do think that customization for a lot of neurodivergent folks makes it more accessible than using something that is out of the box that doesn't really meet your needs. So it's worth considering, um, and if you have any questions, leave a comment, I'm happy to um, follow up. And let me know what other videos you might like to see about Notion, about neurodivergent planning, um, and uh, related topics. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next video.